Hi, I'm Carl Taylor. Welcome to Carl Taylor Live on social media. Now, I've got a fun-filled little show for you today. Um, stick around because I am going to have a bit of a rant about something. I am going to moan about something about people's behaviour because it, it just never ceases to amaze me, the stupidity of some people. But we'll come back to that shortly. Um, first of all, let's have a look at a few things because I've collated a few interesting uh, topics together today. I'm just going to get my uh, browser open. Uh, a few things that I've uh, found, seen, browsing the web, come across or heard news through industry, etc. And uh, a few things I think that you might be interested in. Um, let me just find, where is the first one? That's this one. Right, now, have a look at this. This is a guy called Levon Biss. And uh, I came across his work um, via a TED talk. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is his TED talk on YouTube. If you look up uh, mind blowing magnified portraits of insects or Levon Biss TED talk, I came across this guy and it's quite interesting because he shot um, mostly commercial work and a bit of commercial portraiture and advertising type stuff. It's kind of similar to what I do. And then um, I th he, he kind of explained in his TED talk that he was getting a little bit sort of not depressed with his photography, but a little disenchanted with it. And he wanted to try something new and he decided to try macro photography, but he took it to a whole new level. He basically created a macro rig with a stage where he could move the camera back and forwards. And um, he used microscope lenses, I think on the end of macro lenses, and he set up a little lighting rig. And he really, really went to town on this macro stuff. And then building, and I say building, building images by shooting the tiniest, tiniest portion of an insect and then focus stacking it, and then another portion of it, another portion of it, and then building and mapping all of these images together to create these really unique, highly detailed, very high depth of field macro shots of these insects. And he got so involved in this that the Natural History Museum lent him some of their insect collection. And this is his website, microsculpture.net. But what's amazing about this website is that you can choose the insect and then you can zoom in and up the top here it shows you the scale of uh, what you're looking at and then you can grab the image and you can move around and you can just keep zooming in and the image rebuilds and you can see the wonderful level of detail that this guy has acquired. You can see we're at 0.25 of a millimetre on that scale now. Beautiful lighting, beautiful detail and this is just fascinating. I find it fascinating just exploring around these images and think of how many images this Levon Biss guy used to build this stuff together. And I think this is an amazing website. It's an amazing educational website. I think kids and schools and everything will love this. Uh, and, you know, just exploring and looking at all the different, like, let's take a look at another one here, the orchid cuckoo uh, bee. And, you know, we can zoom right in on this creature as well. Look at the detail in the eye. Now he shot all this on a, on a Nikon, I believe. So all of this has just been shot on 35 mil cameras and then built together from there. And it's absolutely mind blowing. Our hats off to this guy. And what I really love about this story is for those of you that are feeling, you know, a little bit disenchanted with your work or not, where, not knowing where to go, a little bit like this guy was, as you were seeing in his TED talk, he just took this new direction. He just decided, you know what? I want to do something that I can do from home, that I can dedicate the time to. And he built himself a little area, a little room, a little space. Didn't even need a huge amount of space. And he did this. And this has led him onto completely new stuff. He's been doing exhibitions around the world. He's been taking these pictures, large scale exhibitions to different natural history museums. He's now been commissioned by other natural history museums to do similar work for them. So it's amazing when you have a little bit of motivation and you decide, you know what, I'm just gonna change direction or I'm just gonna put my mind to something new. It's amazing what comes about from that. And uh, I think it's a fascinating story from this photographer. Really, really beautiful work. If you wanna check that out, the website is microsculpture.net and the photographer's name is Levon Biss. So have a look at that TED talk on YouTube, really good stuff. Now, uh, other news for you. We have two new wonderful 
tutorials with the lovely, and I say lovely because she's gorgeous, Marky Pearl. I worked with Marky a few times now. Not only is she a stunning model, but she's a lovely girl, lovely personality as well. And uh, we've just released two new tutorials on understanding and using parabolic lighting um, to show you the ins and outs of, of that and, and how to deal with parabolic lighting. So this, this is the lovely Marky here. And um, Marky is also going to be the model on our workshop. I've got this workshop, it's in two weeks from today. It's uh, myself and world-renowned animal photographer Tim Flatt. And Tim has done some amazing insect and beetle work as well. Uh, but Tim photographs usually larger scale animals. Tim's coming into my studio. We've got um, two different horses coming into the studio. I think we've got a, a, a Guernsey cow or a Guernsey goat coming into the studio as well. Uh, now, obviously, the goat is not Marky. Marky's coming into the studio as well. So the lovely model Marky is coming to the studio as well. She's going to be working with us uh, to help us with some of the, the practical demonstrations. We've got loads of theoretical demonstrations. We only have one space left. Now, we didn't have any spaces left, but we had one cancer isolation. If you would like to take that last space for a four-day workshop with Tim Flack and I uh, and the lovely Marky and these beautiful horses and we're going to be doing product photography, beauty photography with Marky, animal photography with Tim Flack, uh, plus loads of theory, loads of other stuff. Uh, it's all inclusive, hotels, everything all covered in there. Check out the page on our Carl Taylor Education, uh, the workshop page. Uh, if uh, you want to take that last place for this workshop in one week's time. Now, I'm coming on to uh, the rant very shortly. Let me, let me just cross off a few things here uh, a, a, about what I'm going to uh, rant about, but let, 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 me, uh, let me come back to the rant in a minute. Uh, other things to mention here, Victor was with us recently and uh, we've been asked for CGI. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know, is CGI gonna take over from product photography? Is, that's computer generated imaging, 3D modeling, you know, using programs like Maya or Lightwave or 3D Studio Max. So you know what, we got Victor in. Victor does a lot of CGI, a lot of 3D work uh, with his uh, outfit at Guild Studio. Studios. So we got him to come in and do uh, an introduction to 3D modeling and CGI and those chapters are going to be released soon and uh, Victor walks us through the whole process from layman's point of view, from a photographer's point of view, showing us how to use this software to your advantage. So if you're in the field of product photography at the moment and this is something that concerns you, this is a great way to step into CGI and learn about that. So you can find that over in our post-production section coming soon on uh, Carl Taylor Education. Now, also tomorrow night, this is tomorrow evening, six o'clock UK time, that's one o'clock um, EST time, New York time. We're doing live liquids. I'm gonna be throwing liquids around the street. Well, actually, Ashley is gonna be throwing liquids around the studio. I'm going to be pre pressing the shutter button at the appropriate moment. Let's take a look at what happened last time we did some liquids. Uh, we had liquid expert David Lund over with us uh, a month or two ago. I can't remember when it was, but here's, here's some excerpts from that live show. That's actually from another uh, liquid one that we did, another demo once before. We're gonna be doing a lot of that tomorrow. Uh, but you can see the amazing detail that we're able to freeze by using high-speed flash. This was the one we did with David Lund, which you can catch on replay if you want to see how that was all done. David was showing us all these techniques for creating different colors and liquids, changing the shape of liquid, playing around with it using different devices. Look at that pure stream of liquid, it looks like glass. Here I got absolutely soaked on that one. We had a really good laugh, great fun. Um, so tomorrow evening, I'm gonna be playing around with liquids live on the show. A Little bit more simplistic than this, stuff that you guys can do at home really, really easily, because it's not actually gonna be that complicated what I'm gonna do, but the results are amazing. And you'll also be uh, glad to hear that the lighting set up for it is actually really, really simple. So, um, Look out for that tomorrow night, live Carl Taylor Education. If you want to check out the David Lund Liquid Show, that's there on replay as well. Now, um, let's just give a mention here. Squarespace, thank you for sponsoring this 
live episode on social media. I use a Squarespace website for all of my commercial photography. This is my Squarespace website. Here's the image that's caused a bit of a furore or whatever recently. This is this anti-marine uh, pollution campaign image that I worked on. And uh, this has gone global. I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna come back to some of the comments and ridiculous statements that we've had come in about this image that I want to address. Um, but I was very, very pleased with this image because I applied a lot of science, a lot of thinking to this image and the way it was going to be most effective and most impactful. And uh, we'll look at that in a little bit closer in a minute. Uh, but you can see how easy it was just to get this um, slap straight into my Squarespace website along with all my other work here. Um, I use the Wells template for my Squarespace website and I've got all my sub categories here so I can just jump between categories then I've got my additional categories and another drop down menu very easy to style all this very easy to put it all together uh, and most importantly very easy to update and just add new things on so various sort of bits and bobs appearances on BBC radio interviews they're all there if you guys want to go and check them out uh, also just you know take a look at my general commercial work uh, separate to the education platform. So thanks to squarespace.com for sponsoring this show. You can get a 14 day uh, free trial of their websites and you can get 10% off your website purchase by using the offer code Carl. Right now let's move on. This is the BBC News uh, Facebook page uh, post here. The, the video has had 786,000 views now, uh, but it also generated a lot of um, controversy, I suppose I would say, it generated a lot of controversy. Let's, let's have a look at why and let's have a look at what we're talking about here. So I created uh, two images for this campaign. This is one of the images. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna open this image in Photoshop um, just so we can take a better look at it. Uh, this is not the full res image, but you'll just take a look at this. So we uh, brought this baby into the studio and, oh, it's only a low res one, this, sorry. Uh, but you can see it's got a syringe in its hand uh, or allegedly a syringe in its hand, or people supposedly thought that we were stupid enough to put a needle, uh, a hypodermic needle in a baby's hand, which of course we wouldn't do. Uh, we put the needle in, in post-production. Uh, all of that rubbish that you see there was there though. That was all brought into the studio. Um, it was collected by volunteers, beach cleaners that collected this stuff over a period of about a month or six weeks. They brought it all into the studio and we arranged it in such a fashion to create this sort of apocalyptic scene, uh, very carefully lit, very carefully constructed, uh, and then this strong message, the future is plastics, it's in our blood. Now, this campaign has already been picked up by Friends of the Earth, uh, it's been picked up by the BBC News Facebook page, it's been uh, on the local news, uh, it's been picked up by the Marine Conservation Society uh, about um, plastic soup, uh, uh, Dot com is another environmental campaign. So loads of people are picking this up. We've made the images freely available for any environmental charities to use them uh, or marine pollution charities to use them. There's this particular image that you can see now and there is uh, one other image that we constructed from all of the rubbish using um, uh, the shape of a human eye uh, with the catchphrase, see the damage that's being done. So we created that in the studio, rigged up the camera from the studio ceiling. Uh, ben made some amazing videos as well that went with these campaigns so that it sort of spin around on the images. And everything you can see there in that image is marine pollution that's been collected from the shores. And that's actually been collected from just a couple of kilometers of shoreline in about a month by a few volunteers. That shows you the scale of the problem. And that's here in the English Channel in the UK. And if you look at that picture, you can see all the variety of stuff there. We've got tons of plastic bottles. We've got uh, webbing, netting, ropes, fishing uh, paraphernalia. We've got um, food packaging um, containers. And around the edge there, all of this stuff that you see that sort of makes up the eyelid zone, this is all polystyrene particles and lumps of polystyrene that are just floating around in our oceans, causing extreme damage to the uh, marine environment to cetaceans, to wildlife, and eventually to us, because this stuff is now, uh, it's been examined by scientists, it's getting into the food chain. As a matter of
matter of fact, I had uh, Professor Richard uh, Lampitt, I think his name was, from the National Oceanographic Centre contact me to use these images. He's studying microplastics, uh, getting into the food chain and krill are eating these tiny microplastics. Cause this plastic stuff doesn't break down. It just basically goes in smaller and smaller particles and ends up in the food chain and then eventually it's ending up in us. So that's, uh, that was the whole idea behind this campaign. And that's actually why we went with the uh, strap line, um, the future is plastics, it's in our blood. The syringe that the baby's holding, the actual syringe part was found amongst all the rubbish that they collected, but we sterilized that. Uh, and then the needle we added in post-production. So it's a little bit of a play on that. Um, now we have a great blog post with a behind the scenes video. As a matter of fact, here is, let's, let's have a play on this, Ben. We're gonna just watch this. This is the start of the video on YouTube. Uh, it's called The Future is Plastics. It's in our blood, so you can catch this on YouTube. And this shows you uh, a little bit about the project. Uh, it shows you, uh, obviously, that the, the uh, main image here, the, the, the first primary image of the campaign. Uh, and then it shows the uh, second image here as well that we created uh, with the, the little baby as the sort of catch light in the eye amongst all of this, uh, this stuff. And we, we shot this as, as a charity thing to raise awareness. Uh, we've made it freely available for all the charities to have access to. This is the, all the, the stuff coming into the studio, all of the rubbish that had been collected and stored. Uh, this is uh, marine biologist Richard Lord who, who helped organise it. Uh, now this, this whole uh, video of how we did the shoot is there on our YouTube on channel, so um, check that out on uh, Carl Taylor YouTube so channel really uh, and you can uh, see uh, a little bit more about that. We've also got a great blog post on Carl Taylor Education with more behind the scenes stuff as well on that. Um, so be sure to take a look at that as well. Now, uh, I wanted to come on to uh, some of the feedback that we've had about this campaign. Now, um, th let, let me just get this very, very clear right now. 99.9% .9 of the feedback on this campaign has been incredibly positive. We've had scientists from different parts of the world emailing us saying fantastic job, fantastic work, fantastic images. We've had the general public, uh, the general public uh, commenting on these images and saying how impactful they were and how emotional they felt they were uh, and how they got the message across. Um, we've had uh, environmental organisations contacting us to use them, which was the whole point to raise awareness. So, uh, you know, by and large, 99% of the feedback has been amazingly positive. Now, I don't normally like to do this to give the sort of trolls, if you like um, airtime on this but I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, give a little bit of airtime on this because I want to make awareness of how stupid some people are I mean really how the level of stupidity is beyond belief sometimes now let's 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 take a look and address some of these comments because I'm not going to let these comments go untested okay so uh, let's look at the first one um, Rodri DeMello said, "Very. this is on the BBC News Facebook page, very pathetic to use a baby to bring awareness to your cause. Very pathetic. Well, tell me, Rodri, why is it pathetic, okay? Because I don't see any reason that it's pathetic to use a baby to bring awareness to a cause. This affects the future generations of our planet, okay? The baby is the future generation, and we are ruining it for the future generation. So why on earth is it pathetic to use a baby? The mother was right next to the baby. The baby was not holding a needle. Where the baby was sitting, there was a clear safe area. The baby couldn't crawl. We particularly used a baby that could only sit and then wouldn't move from that particular spot. So what are you actually getting at when you say this is pathetic? And luckily, the majority of people that responded to the comments have all said, why is it pathetic? Same response as I'm getting here. But it seems to me that some people just have no uh, sense or understanding of what it means to raise awareness. Of course, I wanted to create a provocative image, an image that in some ways was shocking because the baby was holding a hypodermic needle. So that in itself is shocking. The baby is sat amongst all this debris in an apocalyptic looking scene. So it's shocking. It's meant to be shocking. If it isn't shocking, it's not going to get your attention. And with this type of awareness message, it needs to get your attention. And I 
planned the image, sketched the image, predetermined the image, pre-visualized the image to do exactly that. And I'm exceptionally pleased that it came out as I had hoped for. Uh, and it's comments like that that just make me wonder, what is the legitimacy of your argument, argument there. There, there. there seems no legi legitimacy. It just seems to be based on reactionary stupidity, in my opinion. Here's another one. Another one saying, uh, this is Clay, Clay, Clelly Kevin. The, he commented, I can clearly say these names on here because they're publicly visible on the um, BBC News Facebook page. Uh, Terrible putting a child in danger amongst that rubbish with a needle. Shame on you, BBC. What a load of nonsense. As it clearly explained, if he had only watched the video, it clearly showed that we didn't put the child in danger. That it clearly explained in the video that the, the needle was photoshopped into the picture. So someone's making comments on it before they even watched the video that they're talking about. Another example of complete stupidio. So well done to you, Clayley. You've completely confirmed your level of stupidity as well. Uh, another one here, Rob Dara. Uh, how about you don't put your very clean looking baby in the pollution and give him a needle? Uh, maybe some child abuse charges need to be placed on these folks and the ad agency. Uh, Rob Dara, that's from. Again, didn't watch the video, just got all hot-headed and commented without even thinking about it. I mean, are these people, how many brain cells do these people have between them? Can we collectively gather those brain cells and even fill a tiny amount of an ant's head? Because it really amazes me, absolutely amazes me. Let's have a look at another one. Fake news. Thomas Fay says fake news, okay? How can it be fake news when there's a video evidence of the people collecting the rubbish, bringing it here, the whole photo shoot, and us doing the thing. How on earth can it be fake news? What sort of dumbness are, are, the, are, are some of these comments coming from? David Calder says, what a load of cobblers. We don't have any uh, marine pollution in the UK. Or he says, we recycle all our plastic. It's not our problem. Well, well done, David. You're right. They do recycle a lot of plastic in the UK. But that doesn't mean, mean to say the problem's going to stop because of that. That doesn't mean to say that the problem isn't coming to our shores from elsewhere. That doesn't mean to say that we should just neglect and refuse to acknowledge the problem because the UK recycles its plastic. What sort of short-sighted, dumbass comment is that? I mean, let's not deal with the problem because it's not ours. Well, it is ours because it washes up here, it washes up everywhere. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It's a global problem and it needs to be addressed globally. And we're trying to raise awareness towards that. So David uh, Calder, you are a number one idiot as well. Uh, let's move on. Ken Jackson, Photoshop pick, the rubbish was collected over several months, arranged for maximum effect, the baby was then photoshopped onto the rubbish. Uh, no, it wasn't. The baby was there. Watch the video. If you'd seen the video, you would have seen exactly how it's done. Robert Visbel, another complete idiot. That's sick, putting a baby with holding a needle on a photo just to get a point through. What's this world heading to? I'll tell you what this world is heading into, Robert. It's heading into ignoramus behavior from idiots like you that have no idea about what you're talking about because you didn't bother to watch the thing that you're commenting on in the first place. So that's what the world is heading to, unfortunately. And let's hope that the 99% of people that commented positively and intelligently or took the time to actually watch the thing and understand the purpose of the message uh, are really get, it's really getting through to them. Uh, and then this uh, last one from Alan Smith. I think we're gonna crown Alan, give him the glory clown Cup of the Year Award. Uh, this advert is offensive and should be pulled. It's a disgusting exploitation of children. The makers of this video are grossly irresponsible. They are unbelievably stupid garbage like this is not the way to do deal with pollution. It's insulting. Why is it insulting, Alan? What is insulting about it? Did it shock you a little bit? Did it make you aware? Did it make other people aware? Was the baby harmed? Did we use a real needle? No, none of that. Watch the bloody video and stop talking out of your ass. Right, that's me done with my little rant. I'm sorry if I've offended anyone here, but I'm sorry, I cannot let this stuff rest, okay? Because it seems to me in society today, there's so many idiots. There's too many idiots that seem to be taking over and raising their heads uh, you know, above and starting to comment, starting to feel they've got some you know, ability to make these ridiculous claims and comments too much Oh, just it's really getting on my nerves. Anyway, I am glad to say the campaign has been a big success. Uh, it's been very, very well received. And um, 
it continues to do so and I'm very proud of it and I'm very, very pleased with what uh, the team and I have achieved. So regardless of the few uh, trolls or idiots that don't really pay attention to it, thank you so much all of you for your wonderful comments on the uh, project so far. As I said, if you want to learn more about it, it's on our blog as well. Now, uh, some other thing for you guys that's coming soon. We have got a great video about this. This is the Asus Pro Art 31 inch 4K monitor that I did a comparison test on last week of the ISO 31 inch CG318 color edge monitor against this monitor. And it is fascinating the results. You are gonna be very, very interested in that video. Look out for that video. If you're in the market for a um, retouching level, color calibration uh, level, um, uh, accurate, color accurate monitor, you're gonna really enjoy that video review. We're hopefully, when are we gonna be posting that, Ben? Later this week? Yeah. Probably, probably this week. So look out for that on our YouTube channel. Um, right, now, a couple of things uh, I just wanted to found on the net that I wanted to finish off with. Uh, no, let's, let's calm it down a little bit. Let's move on to a couple of more light-hearted things. Um, this video, the sky is not the limit. It's had 1 million, 1.2 million views. This guy, look at him, crazy drone pilot, but they obviously gave this really skilled drone pilot a drone with a camera and then let him fly it around as he liked. And the footage is just incredible. Some of it's amazing, some of it's okay, but some of it is really eye-catching because the way he can literally flip this drone around and get these unique camera angles and perspectives. So I thought this was a great little video if you're into uh, drone uh, filming or drone photography, some uh, really incredible stuff. That's called The Sky Is Not The Limit, Johnny FPV, that can be found on YouTube. Now this other one, uh, I love this one, this one's only had 12,000 views, it's called Drone Launch uh, Volvo Ocean Race. And I particularly like this one because Ben, our resident uh, video expert camera guy here, when we were out filming uh, last uh, year, when we were filming the Guernsey Scallop Diver film, the short film, Ben managed to fly the drone into the fisherman's boat and had it not hit the gunnels of the boat, it would have taken my head off. Uh, and that was on a lovely, clear, calm day. Uh, but he got the shots, you know. But look at these guys. These guys are flying a drone in hurricane force winds by the looks of it. Look what he does with this drone. So this is the conditions and he just he takes the drone and he just throws it out the window. Here we go, let's just throw the drone out the window and then let the drone follow us. Look how windy, look at the state of those seas, the ferocity of the seas. And then this drone is filming them in the Volvo Ocean Race. Amazing that they even managed to fly the drone in those conditions. But then what's even more amazing is they get the, the, the drone back to the boat. Now, we know how difficult it can be from our experience as well, flying drones and using them in our productions to, uh, to, to, to bring them back to base. Obviously, it's easier when you've got this technology that brings them back, but when you're trying to do it in these tough conditions, look at these guys, look how they bring it in. It's literally just point and hope, really. Here it comes, here it comes. Someone's gonna try and catch it. No, he doesn't catch it. Oh, this guy gets it. Luckily, he had a big, strong, waterproof jacket on there to uh, stop himself from uh, getting cut to pieces. So uh, those were a couple of things. Uh, I really would enjoy it if you could check out that um, anti-marine uh, pollution uh, campaign video on our blog. Uh, you can find it over on here in our main menu. It's on articles. You go into inspiration and then you go from inspiration, that takes you into our blog, and there it is there in that page uh, on the Ocean Pollution Awareness Campaign. There are the short video indents, there's all the backstory on how we did it, the behind the scenes, the previs, everything about it. And most importantly, there are loads of links of what you can do to help, how you can get out there and how you can help with this problem. So let's make it everyone's problem and let's see if we can solve it. I'm Carl Taylor, thanks very much for watching.